This week on Engineering Newswire, we're driving old fighter jets in the desert, building drug subs, and designing new NFL helmets. In 1998, Ed Shadel, Keith Zangie, and a team of engineers bought a Lockheed F-104 Starfighter jet with one goal in mind, shattering the new land speed record set by Richard Noble's Thrust SSC. Using spare time and weekends, the Washington State-based team began re by renovating the airframe for use on the ground, while also rebuilding and testing a surplus jet engine in order to provide the horsepower needed to propel the Eagle. Since 2006, the team has done some serious testing, going from 200 mile per hour tests up to 441, each time having to go back to the drawing board and often invent technologies that would withstand such a great system shock. Their research has led to new developments in magnetic braking systems that generate 3,600 3, horsepower at 800 miles per hour without wearing out. The high speeds also force the creation of new high speed bearings and special lubrication designed for wheels that are capable of up to 950 miles per hour. New high speed parachutes were even required to ensure that the vehicle would stop. So the system began testing new nano laminate materials that have even drawn the eye of the US military. The eyes around the world are, uh, will be on Team Eagle as they shoot for the record in 2013 and you can even lend a hand by supporting the team at its uh, website and its Facebook page. Finally, an American Eagle customer that I can tolerate. Lousy kids. As a laser material, germanium together with silicon could form the basis for computer chips which information could be transferred partially in the form of light, revolutionizing data streaming within chips and giving a boost to the performance of electronics. Researchers at the Paul Schur Institute have been able to demonstrate that germanium, under certain conditions, can function as a laser material. What does all this mean? Tiny germanium lasers could make chips significantly faster by processing information in the form of light. Lasers transforming into information! A computer at Manipal International University in Malaysia is being taught to interpret human emotions based on lip pattern providing the potential to improve the way we interact with computers and perhaps allow disabled people to use computer-based communications devices, such as voice synthesizers, more effectively and efficiently. Researchers have developed a system using a genetic algorithm that gets better with each iteration to match irregular lips-fitting equations to the shape of the human mouth, displaying different emotions. They have used photos of individuals to train the computer to recognize the six commonly accepted emotions happiness, sadness, fear, anger, disgust, surprise, and neutral expression. Hopefully soon, they can also train computers to recognize hand gestures so they know exactly what I'm thinking when they randomly decide to freeze up on me at work. What am I feeling now, Suri? What am I feeling? A Swiss-American team of researchers has devised a simple, inexpensive system based on nanoparticles, a kind of nano-velcro, to detect and trap heavier metals and other toxic pollutants in the water. Researchers are particularly interested in detecting mercury. Its most co common form, methylmercury, accumulates as one goes up in the food chain, reaching its highest levels in large predatory fish such as tuna and swordfish, and eventually on your dinner plate. The technology developed by the Swiss-American team is simple to use. A strip of glass covered with a film of hairy nanoparticles is dipped into the water. When an ion gets in between two hairs, the hairs close up, trapping the pollutant. By varying the length of the nano hairs, the researchers can target a particular kind of pollutant. Now that's what I call a heavy metal detector. Are you ready for some football? Are you ready for some football? Bill Simpson, former helmet designer for motorsports, is obsessed with designing and manufacturing a safer football helmet. His obsession has led to the recent launch of SGH Helmets, a company he believes can transform player safety across the spectrum, from the NFL to youth football. Simpson, who has already won approval to offer helmets to NFL players and teams, claims his design uses better materials and doesn't follow the decades-old blueprint of other helmet makers, featuring expensive aerospace industry and composite fiber materials that form IndyCar and Formula One chassis. Simpson is entering the football helmet market at a time concussion awareness at all levels of football is at an all-time high. 
Currently, the NFL is facing a class action lawsuit joined by retired players who say the league didn't do enough to protect them from brain injuries, and many states have adopted laws that restrict school coaches from using players who have had concussion. In the early 90s, drug cartels came up with a new tactic to transport narcotics, destined for the U.S. Small, radar-dodging, self-propelled semi-submersibles. Though I think they gave them a catchier name, like My Drug Sub. These subs were long thought to be more myth than legend until the Coast Guard nabbed one in 2006. The Department of Homeland Security has since taken a high-tech drug trade a bit more seriously. DHS needed a semi-submersible to help detect the hidden but determined maritime smuggling operations, so it created Pluto, a small government-funded narco sub that serves as a practice target for DHS detection systems. Pluto is just over 45 feet long and can run up to 10 knots at max speed with a crew of 3 to 4 although it typically operates with one lone, so one lone soldier for safety reasons. It has VHF and HF radios and the ability to install other automated identification system equipment to meet testing or safety requirements. The specs are similar, but the conditions on board were primarily influenced for the need for the crew safety, whereas drug mules typically have very little to eat, which is good because they don't have toilets, the air quality is terrible, and they don't typically sleep until they arrive at their destination. Are these horrendous conditions or merely symptoms of their cargo on board? Someone's been dipping into that stash. Do you have story ideas for the next episode? Comment below or email us with your story ideas and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire.